Hey, fitness class. How's it going? Um, it's been a couple of kind of crazy days for me, um, just with family and dealing with some stuff. But um, we're back. Projectiles at motion. Let's kind of go through this. This is just an intro to basics of basically how to set up your questions, how to try and understand them. And the biggest thing is, like, there, there's one big helpful hint that I can give you that's going to hopefully make the rest of these questions at least seem a little easier. So. When I talk about projectiles at motion, what do I mean? Sorry, projectiles and angles. What I mean, basically you're gonna have one of these two kind of questions. Basically, someone's on the ground, throwing something or catapulting something or whatever at an angle, um, or someone's on a mountain or some kind of elevated spot, and as well, they're also using an angle to come off this. Okay, so there's, there's the two questions that you're gonna get. For either of these, they could just be like, how far did it go and land on the ground? Or it could be like, it needs to go over a castle wall, it needs to go over a tree, or I need to hit a target at this exact spot. Um, and so there's a few different questions that you can kind of get. So let's go over one question or one thing here, and I'll, I'll talk about how to make this basically easier. And how we make this easier is basically just make it a horizontal question. So last week we did projectiles just horizontal touch, just with an actual VX, okay? Our VY was zero. And we can make every single one of these questions just like that. But we have to get to a certain point first. And that point is basically just getting to our, where our VY is zero. So let's say I shoot this thing, let's say I put it at 20 meters per second, okay, at 30 degrees. And I want to know a bunch of things. How far did it go? How long was it in the air? What was the highest point it got to? Um, all, all those different things. The biggest thing that we need to know is for any question, projectiles at angles, is we want to make it back to a horizontal, back to a like, there's no VY, there's just a VX, and we can make that simple. And the way that we do that is we break it into its like max point. We get VY to equal zero. And when does that actually happen? It happens, like if I imagine this, it's gonna look something like this. Here's my shot, it's gonna go like this and back down. That happens right here. When it gets to the very top of the arch, when it gets to the very, very peak, the VY is zero, okay? Because you can imagine, anytime you throw something up, the VX is gonna be constant. We talked about that last week. The actual VX, whatever that is, and I'll calculate that over here in a second. That VX is going to be constant out throughout the whole thing, so that's not going to change. But the VY is going to consistently keep changing. All right, it's going to be positive here, and then it's going to get to zero, and then it's going to be negative on this side, okay? And it's going to keep getting negative, like, more and more and more as you go, okay? And eventually until it lands. Let's say it lands right here, all right? But if we can kind of figure out this and all the information here first, and then we have our, like, our nice horizontal launch from here. Okay, and this is going to help us, especially when we have elevated scenes and all that kind of stuff. Because on this one, whatever happens first is going to happen exactly the same at the very end. So that, that's kind of nice. But when we get to hills and we get to mountains, and especially when you're off elevated surfaces, it, it's, it's going to be really important to chunk it here, find what height it got to, find exactly how long it got to there, and then we can kind of get the rest. So let, let me just kind of go through this one here uh, and just get to the actual point here. So how would I first start this off question? You're always, always going to want to break your actual initial velocity, and it's 20 meters per second. I just see that there's a glare exactly where it is, um, into your VX and VY. So what is my VX? What is my VY? Again, if I'm looking at 30 degrees, my cos is going to be my X. My sine opposite is going to be my Y. So if I go cos of 30 times 20, I get 17.3 going to be consistent the whole time. That's not going to change. 17.3. And then if I go sine of 30, even though I'm pretty sure that's 0.5 times 20, I get 10. So my VY is 10. Excuse me, 10. All right. What am I going to do? How am I going to get to this? How do I know? Well, there's a few things I can figure out. I can figure out time to get there. I can figure out like my distance. Usually I like doing time kind of first off just to kind of do that. Uh, and the nice thing is we can do that pretty easily, okay? We have a VF, like a final and an initial for my Y. I know it starts off as 10. I know it gets to zero, okay? I know my acceleration is negative 9.8 because right now it's slowing it down. Okay, so I can figure out my time to get to here. My time's gonna be a couple of things that I can find then my distance this way. I can figure out things. 
I'll do that in my next video. I'm going to go through one full question in my next video and I'm going to find three or four different things. But the biggest intro and the biggest suggestion I can give you is basically, why do we break it off at the highest point? The reason we break it off at the highest point is because, first off, it makes it into a horizontal launch for the rest of the problem, which may seem not that important for this question, but for a lot of other questions, when you're on a hill and you have to add distances or you have to figure out exactly how much more time or to hit a target, this is kind of an important part. All right? And it's going to make the rest of it kind of easier. So that's my big thing is, is talking about how do we get this and turn this back into an easy question, break it up into that point. Um, in my next, I'm going to try to do two or three more videos and it's going to kind of go through a couple of different questions. One, very similar to this. The next one will go basically off of a hill. And then my fourth question will go kind of figure out a few different little tweaks of questions that I can give you. All right, class. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.